Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we got one of those. Super secret password. I have no idea. What's that? What are, oh, the actual screen goes down more? Uh, no, that's the light switch. Uh, is, is that as low as that, the screen actually goes? Try that. What the heck? OK. Well, hold on. Um, I could. Uh, no. Maybe that is the lowest. We have the technology to fix this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do that. Because you guys don't need to see that. Okay. And then I'm going to lift this up a little bit. How's the, I know, right? Okay. So, yeah. All right. We're going to do this. We're going to do this again. And then, in general, kind of show you what's what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so on the D-Link, they have the ability to, they have a, uh, in the event you blow away something bad, you, you do something and you make it unbootable like this. Because I wanted to leave it in this state so that you understand it's like, oh God, what do I do now? Okay, well the, the D-Links have a recovery mode that can be accessed with the reset button. Okay, so now if I've connected Nope, I sure didn't. Hold on. And now you can't do anything. <laughs> Don't accidentally plug in the 3.3 volt either. That will. Okay, no. Okay. I had the uh, I had the ground and the transmit reversed. Hold on. One would think that at this point I would have labeled all of the pins. You could, yeah, you know. All right. So, like I said, getting into the recovery firmware is easy. Okay. So there. So now you're actually in. This is actually in U-boot right now. So that's, so by default, on, on this model of D-Link, you can't actually bypass anything um, unless you have physical access. So they've left just enough bits. A lot of these vendors will leave just enough bits for us to play with if you know what you're doing and you have the right screwdriver. You can get in and you can get to this point. Um, the way that you start doing stuff, um, so when you fire this thing up into Linux, it's going to tell you a lot of stuff, but what you want to start doing is working with a netboot environment. You don't actually want to touch the flash first because um, you want to get into a netboot environment and then you want to be able to DD the entire flash off of the machine when you're starting to do prototyping onto somewhere else so you can pop it into a hex editor and actually see where the calibration is because just because U-boot is going to tell you where it has been programmed to have uh, what the layout of the flash is. The flash is just a big 8 meg, 16 meg chunk, and typically, uh, at least in the D-Link universe, they're only using 8 meg of that. 
So right, in, right around the six megabyte portion of the flash will be the valuable calibration data. And uh, so when you start the thing up, you're like, oh, well, I have 16 mega flash. I'll just use the whole thing. And then you wipe out the calibration data. And uh, what's that? It's literally um, unique to every single router that does wireless. It's the RF calibration data for the wireless transmitter receiver. Um, so, every, so once you destroy that, you have, you have uh, spent $50 on learning is at, at that point. This, you know, it's, it's a thing that happens. I've done it. Um, I was warned as well by <laughs> to, to not do that, and uh, I did it anyway. Yeah, no, the U-boot stuff is actually, this is, um, I would have to hook up a JTAG burner to change U-boot. So it's in the ROM of, it's part of the bootstrapping process of the machine. Right. It's, it's like, separate. It came, it came from the back. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so th this is, I am, I will not be modifying U-boot or whatever. Right, but you didn't install it. No, no, this is, this is the D-Link modified version of U-boot for this router. Um, so. If, I've, if, if my machine works correctly, let's see. Okay, so on this machine, we can actually TFTP an image off. I've set up TFTP, and if somebody's interested in the details of that, we can look at it. Um, I had to do this a couple of times to figure out what the file name, you have to do it at least once to find out what file name it's gonna ask for, and then we're gonna tell it to boot from the image that we actually got. And theoretically, we should get some science. So I haven't actually touched the I haven't actually touched the flash here. I haven't done anything really crazy. Um, yeah. There we go. So you, this is a, it said MD2 up there, yeah. Mm hmm Okay, so it's using it's using a RAM disk booting method that we have in the tree. Um, these things work, um, things that I'm not satisfied with. Um, OpenWRT has a robust packaging system and a robust file system that understands Flash. It uses JFFS. Um, you can't install packages here. This image is static. So if you want drop bear SSH or you want uh, a DHCP server, uh, you're gonna have to burn, you're gonna have to build that in the image um, before you burn it onto the Flash or you netboot it. Uh, we're, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to understand how NANDFS works right now um, so that I can teach it all about the Atheros uh, flash layout and basically have to write a driver for it so that we can use it under NANDFS. Um, and then that'll allow us to do actual packages and stuff. So anyway, always bring a backup when you do a live demo. That's the lesson we've learned today. Um, does somebody want to take a, does anybody have an Allen wrench? Starhead? No? Nothing? All right. Somebody want to take a shot at getting these screws out? While I'm up here, you want to try, Louis? I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're star. Does anybody have a hacksaw? I have plenty of strings. Don't bring them with you. Well, why not? Oh, yeah. So that one is too big. But you might be able to, don't be gentle with it. It'll be, yeah, it'll be fine. Um, so the, okay, you want to see it? Boop. Yeah, they hook right up to it, and they figure out the they figure out all of the uh, signaling characteristics of the Y, and they enter in this calibration data. So um, go ahead. Every single wire or every, every single radio is different enough to calibrate every single one. I guess so. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So. Um, all the drivers, uh, all the Atheros drivers assume that there is going to be a flash configuration partition, 
and they're going to be able to go into that flash configuration partition and find out all the magic signaling bits that are inside of it. Um, hold on. I have to remember where it is. So does that actually work when you bring up the wireless properties because it will go and grab the configuration data and everything? Right now? Yeah, I could. All right, so um, so here's here's all the so the the important one they're no, it's normally called an art. <coughs> what the heck does that even stand for? Regulatory something? A I don't know. Make up a make up a configuration here or an acronym. Art. Uh, I don't know, you guys want to pipe to more? I need to pipe it to a hex editor here. But so, uh, ddif equal dev uh, map art bs equal 64k. Why is it 64k? Because I know, and we'll look at how I know, that that's 64k in a minute. Uh, pipe uh, <coughs> one. In C. What's that? Uh, yeah, it's called map. Uh, I'll show you that. I'll show you the kernel config so you can uh, do all of the. You can see what drivers and whatnot. Uh, am I doing this right? Yes, I'll show you how to get the mapping here in a minute. So maybe? Oh, the sound just looks so, so sophisticated. Hmm, yeah, all right. Um, password one, two, three. Okay, so notice, notice that the default subnet that the U-boot parameters use is different than, the def than what our image system comes up with right now. Um, so I will call this that. Sure. One dot, was that 20? I'm just thinking that fast. Yeah, to make sure that's working, okay. Uh, Derp. Try that. All right. And then we're going to this here. Dev map art 64K. Don't even worry about breaking it. Okay. It's star. All right. Now, uh, what's now? Uh, one minute. <coughs> Hex dump dash. C. Thank you. Yeah, you'll actually, we'll actually, it'll make a little bit more sense here. All right, so magic bits, magic bits, magic bits. Okay, now, this, why, why do I know that this is a model number of the prototype board? Because I do. All right. Yes, now, there you go. So, yeah, that's where it's actually, that's where all of the magic is actually burned into the ROM. So this is this is imp this is important stuff for the driver. Yeah, of course. So it's actually configuration data too. Yeah, it it teaches the driver if you request this power setting, this is your uh, this is this is your fudge factor when you actually program the program the 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 transmitter or whatever. There you go. So that stuff there, that's that's. 
so the vendor burns that in and then the vendor version of OpenWRT, DDWRT or whatever may or may not read that for whatever reason. So it can or can't use that. That's, that's arbitrary to, to whatever they're doing. Um, like our FreeBSD Wi-Fi stuff doesn't actually look at that. The more important stuff is all of the, okay, here's, you know, channel, you know, primary channel six, AP channel mode 11, all this kind of good stuff. And then we start getting into what to, uh, what to actually attenuate. This isn't, this is interesting, not necessarily important, but the, the Atheros wireless driver will fail if this stuff isn't present and you haven't mapped, mapped it correctly. Loser, are you about to get the, are you about to just. Wow. Well, at this rate, it'll be done by dinner. I know, right? Yeah. Well, if they had, if they had, if they had HP server gear, because every single, every ProLiant from, from the compact days, they all have the right screwdriver on the back of them. I just don't have one with me because I don't use that stuff anymore. Actually, do I? Did I leave one in? Sometimes I wonder what I do. It's fine. It's fine. No one's ever going to put that case lid back on anyway. I, it's literally I brought that to be destroyed this week, so don't. It's not. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. So that's the configuration partition, which is that's the only part that we actually care about. And when I say care about, I mean never, ever, ever touch and you should immediately back it up. Like we have just done, we have backed it up off of the machine here onto here, and now you put it somewhere, and you can, absolutely, you can DDD it back and it's fine. You should, what he said. You should, because, because you, will, you will find, when you're doing science, sometimes you have experiments that fail. Uh, so let's go. Just some of the more technical, uh, some of the more BSD-centric stuff here. So in the MIPS directory, there's all of this crap. OK. Uh, I, consi I consider the way that FreeBSD does this as a bit of a bug. Um, I kind of like the OpenWRT style. I'll look at, we'll look at that in a second. But for every one of those, and those things get revved about every six months. Uh, there is a kernel configuration. Um, so if you guys want to start messing with this stuff, you'll notice, you'll notice how quickly these things propagate. So the, the base system, this one, these, are, these guys right here are the Atheros, like this is what this model, this reference platform can actually do. These are all of the things in it and whatnot that you know, this is where the, the Atheros Ethernet switch is. This is where the Atheros wireless is. This is what usually the flash looks like. It's the defaults. And then here's the reference board for this guy that you could get as an Atheros developer. And then these are two that uh, I've been messing with. Um, the, this one here is actually that one that's over there. Um, Here's the TP link that's cut off. Um, that one, uh, quite a few people have had good success with. Um, oops, there we go. Over, over, okay, do that again. Um, this one is a really, really, really easy to use, not very secure in the slightest Buffalo model. So it, this one is really great to play with, but don't put it anywhere where you care about your data. Uh, this one will TFTP anonymously on every boot. So if, you, if somebody is on your network and provides a TFTP server with a flash image, it will auto burn that image to its, to its flash for you. But it's branded as open, open WRT friendly, and there's no way to turn that off unless you do something. It's very, it's very, so this one was the first one, this is the, Absolutely, right? Because nobody's going to have a rogue TFTP server on your network. This one? It's only like 12 months old. Yeah, yeah, it's 24K Atheros. Uh, it's got, a, you know, it works fine. I have one. In, I didn't bring it with me for, for entertainment reasons. Um, yes. 
Yeah, we should probably add that soon. Um, I know, right? Yeah, we can probably add that tonight. Uh, so this stuff here um, is, if you guys are interested in 64K MIPS, uh, which is not these, um, talk to the Cambridge kids. They have um, all of this 64K Berry stuff, which is based on FPGAs, um, I think. Yeah. And uh, that's where they're doing it. You see people walking around with these router stations. They're kind of cool. Uh, Pico Station, a friend of mine uh, in, uh, and Adrian have been working on. It's about this big. It's a transmitter. It's a, it, it really doesn't, it has one Ethernet port out to your network and a wireless, tran, uh, wireless transceiver. And uh, it's really great as a little repeater or other things that you may want to do on wireless networks that you're interested in seeing. This one's really good for that. Um, now, all right, so that's, these are all kernel configs. Who gives a crap? You know, obviously the kernel's going to be able to compile. Yeah, I don't know why you would use those things. Who, why would you do that? Oh, as a comparison. All right. Oh. So this is, this is one, of my, one of my objections to the way that we do stuff. So if you're familiar with the FreeBSD kernel configuration file, all right, so this is for that one. Um, we start off with this as our base parameter. Uh, we have a whole bunch of device-specific hints, and this is how we do device enumeration in this world. It's actually kind of gruesome. Um, we'll look at that in a second. Um, it's got GPIO bus. This one, this unit itself, with those, that little tiny thing, can set, can do VLAN switching, all kinds of really awesome things. Um, Let's see. All right. In order to, in order to do the magic with doing a compressed disk image, burning it onto flash, and then uncompressing it into RAM, you need this guy. This is this is the the magical flag that does all that. So you're going to build a compressed image, um, and then burn that onto flash, and then at boot time the kernel's going to go, oh my root file system is here, let me uncompress that and then mount it as a RAM disk. Um, this is the configurations that I use to netboot, obviously, and this is the only thing you need when you're actually burning it onto flash. So you need this and this, and this stuff is for TFTP booting. In this universe? Well, how are you going to get to it? Because it's on the flash compressed, so you have to uncompress it, but you don't know what the name of it. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't, have, you don't have EFI protecting you and giving you this warm embrace of love and joy. Um, so this is where it gets super messy. Um, I hate this crap. I, it's, taken me, it's taken me at least a year to get to the point where I can go, Oh, okay. So, to, I'm not going to get into. I'm not. We can we can talk about mechanically what this stuff actually means, what the buses are, why we have these offsets, and instead of um, having you know having the driver do things that would be sensible, um, it's really really so makes me makes me angry. This this. Say what? Well, yeah, it, because we don't have, we don't have, did you get it? That's why we keep, that's why we keep. It took two of us in addition to you. That's why, that's why we keep Lou's around. Thank you. Um, the, the, the most, so don't worry about the rest of this. You can, you can ask me in email. It'll be fine. Notice I've left up here this guy. It's very important to know where that is. That's going to be passed to the driver. Notice this stuff here, and notice this. The, the wireless adapters on that machine are on a PCI bus. I put air quotes around that because it's on a PCI bus. So you can LS PCI, and you can actually see things. This is what I kind of wanted to get into, how, how I know that stuff is where I think it is. Right, that I know that this is where it is. U-boot will tell me, the vendor firmware will tell me, which we'll see in a minute. 
And then we have to do the magic of telling everything where we know where are the partitions, what are the offsets in hexadecimal on the flash device, and how we get to stuff. Um, so for example, I've taken this partition here that is called the Lang partition for so that they could sell this thing in uh, different, different countries and whatnot. And they just burn, they take the same unit and they burn a different language into it. I've just taken that and called it my arbitrarily, arbitrary config partition um, for this unit. And I've set the read-only flag off. So this is the only part of Flash from user land when the thing is actually up and running that you can read and write from. And then a little bit more. And the mag so the Mac, Atheros, especially this one, has a 64K piece of Flash dedicated to store the MAC addresses in ASCII. We can look at that. We can look at that later. It really, really entertained me when we found that. And then this is the magical art. Never, ever, ever, ever touch it. Back it up forever and ever and ever. Back up the whole Flash, as Lou said. OK, so kernel config, device hints. Once you mess with it and you figure <coughs> you get to a point where your net booting and stuff works, then we can start talking about actually burning it onto Flash. That's going to be vendor specific. Every vendor is going to have a different way of getting stuff. Uh, Lou's actually turned me on to this syntax right here. Um, do you guys kind of understand what that's doing? It's very, very goofy. So it's saying your partition is going to start at that address into Flash. And then I'm going to search in starting the end of this partition is going to be starting somewhere around here, searching in this size for something that looks like that in text. OK? So in other words, when the kernel boots up, it's going to go, oh, well, I think the kernel ends here because I saw this. And this comes out of the very first thing that's in the file system. And then, then for the root file system, we do, the, we do the inverse. We say, OK, start there for the beginning, search in this size chunks, and look for this, and that's the beginning. And then I have a hard end in Flash at here, because the next partition is here, and then here, and then here. So what does all that mean? Um, there are. a thousand different ways you can do this. Um, Adrian, myself, and here in Panchasara have kind of whacked on this. There's Z Router. We may want to resurrect Z Router at some point, because it's, it's actually got a lot of features that we like. Uh, crochet um, is another thing that you can use to do this. I use this because it uses make, and I like make. And on here. You can actually, yeah, so as long as you got the kernel on the flash, you can have your root file system be on a USB storage device. So in the event, you know, 8 meg or 4 meg is insufficient, OK, we'll get a terabyte. It'll work. You can UFS, ZFS? I don't know. 128 meg of RAM? I don't know. Talk to the ARM kids. Talk to the ARM kids. They're doing it. Why not? Um, I have I have uh, I have primitive a primitive explanation on how to do net booting and stuff. Um, generally, all the configurations and whatnot. This is a subversion project that's out of tree. Um, I try to go into you know quality soldering. Um, you notice you notice the. I don't know what I was, I must have had way too much coffee because that thing ended up down here and those are over there and then the cables go in. But I just want to generally give people an idea of what the layout looks like um, and then what it's going to look like when it boots up, what the menus are, kind of the stuff we just went over, right? And so this is, in general, what the thing looks like when that one boots up. So unlike, unlike our AMD64 universe, Let's go look at this guy. So I've got a little bit of stuff. How to build the firmware. 
Like, what is the command? Once you've checked out this code, what is the command line you should run? So this one again, completely different way to get it, get firmware installed. It's going to look different. It's got a, the firmware files have signatures on them. Sometimes it's just a string. Sometimes it's padding. Sometimes it's whatever. Um, when the system boots up, it'll tell you. U-boot will tell you what it ex what Linux is probably going to look for. So MTD parts is the, the, the term that's used to explain where all of the, where, where the subdivisions of stuff are. U-boot uh, only cares about where the kernel is. And signatures, by signatures, do you mean that's what the loader is looking at? For when, it looks at when, it, when it actually looks at the firmware file before it flashes it, It'll look to see if there's some signature string, and I'll sh I'll show you what I'll show you exactly what I mean. Not, not in a security sense, but in an identification. That's it. Yeah. So that you could so that you don't accidentally put the wrong firmware on the machine. Um, and so like this one, this one obviously is quite a while ago. It's 10 alpha, um, and it does all the things, and it's got all the stuff and all the bits. Um, here's a little bit more with all the things. So. Uh, let me see if I can browse to the right spot here. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet. Trunk. Build bin build. And we'll look at air station. All right. A little bit of arbitrary stuff. Notice at the bottom, so when we actually go to concatenate the image together into, into bits and pieces, that's if this string isn't at the beginning, it'll reject the firmware file. How do we know that? With a hex editor and look at the firmware file. Uh, we look at the D-link. Uh, let's see, did I move that? OK, so in the D-link, guess what? We have two different models of D-links. And they have two different text signatures. This one here, and this one here. And those have to be in the image file when it's created. All right. Yeah, so this is, so let me, let me, let me, Clear up some terminology because I, I am I am kind of uh, bouncing around from topic to topic. So when I say the firmware image, the FreeBSD firmware image, I mean this product. So this is the entire kernel, the entire root file system, and whatever arbitrary signature. This is the thing that's going to get burned to flash. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. It's not, it's not, you know, there isn't any super maximum security wizardry happening here. It's literally, okay, cat, cat, and then echo. I mean, more or less. Um, the, let's see, we did that, we did that, we did that. Shall, are there any? So uh, this is publicly available, BSD licensed, have fun with it. Um, it depends on the base system having a kernel configuration for the router. Um, if you have an out of tree kernel config that you don't want to commit to FreeBSD, you can do that with this project. So if you have, if you, for reasons, if you have a piece of hardware that you don't want the kernel configuration to be publicly available, sure. Wow. <coughs> Oh man, really? Check. Did I? I know, right? I'll talk louder. I like hearing the sound of my own voice anyway. Um Oh, really? Is that scotch tape holding this thing on? Wow. Oh, right, yeah. I'm sorry. Cellophane adhesive on plastic. OK, that antenna is actually glued on. Good. OK. All right, everybody.
So I'm going to pass this around, and we're going to play Spot the Serial Console. If you can identify where the serial console on this is, you win absolutely nothing. You, you win the opportunity to solder. No, actually, I just I looked at it. There will be no soldering required. I'm sorry. The pins are already on. What do you want to do with it? Well, you want to put PF on it? You want to put VLANs on it? You want to? I'm wondering is like where, where sort of in the open router projects, you want to put web interfaces and all Correct. That. So, so the problems. Is there anything like that at this level? I mean, PF Sense obviously is one of our router projects. Oh, yeah. PF, PF Sense is way ahead of this horse, this horse shit. Right. Um, I mean, they're very, they're, their footprint is very large. Correct. Absolutely. Um, so what I'm, what I'm aiming for. My, my magical goal would be that there would be something good enough that people would ha could stop using OpenWRT as the basis of their embedded projects. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't. Really a project to sort of do, take it the last step yet in making embedded systems. Yeah, I mean, so we would love. So right now, I need to corner. Uh, so I need to drag Warner off into a corner. Um, and extract from him and Adrian the Flash specifications for the Athero stuff so that I can hook it directly into NANDFS. Um, that way we can have a read-writable file system. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. There are no problems. Uh, oh, have you guys not seen Everything is Fine? No, no, have you not seen this? Oh, it's great. It's great. All right, hold on. Thank you. Indeed. All right, so everything is fine. Um, is there is there a speaker jack? Is there an overlay? No idea, thank you. Um, go, oh, the volume, yeah, sure. You guys can't hear this. Well, they do yell a lot, do they? Do I have it muted? No, I don't. If only I had somebody here who knew about the FreeBSD sound system. Alexander. Are you okay? I'm fine. Everything is fine. Uh, you don't look fine. So anyway, is everything it, is fine. Is it destroyed yet? Uh, no, it's going around. The, it's going around the room. Anyway, you guys can watch this on your own. I, I literally only have five minutes left. Oh, what, well, okay, so real briefly. Okay, so FreeBSD has this directory filled with files that are kernel configs that are specific to FreeBSD. Um, and if we look at OpenWRT, I think if I do this. So I, I did a checkout this weekend. OK, if we go here, notice how they have everything laid out. And if we look at the very specific kernel configuration file for the C1, it's not a configuration file. It's something that I can be completely ignorant of. I don't have to know how Linux works. I can read C. <laughs> I'm reading and I'm like, oh, OK, there is a data structure that handles LEDs. There is a data structure that handles the pins. There is a data, it's, it's clear. It's clear to me what the, this is their configuration file. Surprisingly enough, C makes pretty good config Well, I don't have to know, I don't, I don't have to care about Linux. I don't have to know what it is. I just go, oh. No, I mean, I've dealt with embedded stuff on Linux and you're right. Uh, this is, this is a. a Correct, and they had to do this um, because of what I showed you with the large amount of configuration. I mean, every single product, you know, I've got two D-links. I have a B1 and a C1. They're the same manufacturer, the same model number, different revisions require different kernel configs with different hints files and different file system layouts. Um, probably. I think that's, I think yes. I mean, do something like that. Yeah, who cares? 
and that's it. So I'm going to migrate to the hallway track, um, and we're going to and we're going to actually we're going to actually boot this thing up. But I'm going to give I'm going to give the room back, and uh, you know, thanks for being. Hopefully, it was of some value. And there are things happening in this space. And if you're interested in doing it, I'm on the internet. You can find me. Anyway, thank you.